Hi folks, Chris McClure here. We uh, now move on to our second discrete probability distribution after the binomial. And this distribution is called the Poisson probability distribution, not Poison. It's, it's French, and I don't know that I pronounce it entirely correct, but it's somewhere along the line of Poisson. Okay, so we're going to uh, do a, a just a, an easy overview of it without going into a whole lot of details. We'll show you how it works, how to calculate some probabilities. I'll show you how to use your calculator to calculate those probabilities. So Poisson distribution is another discrete probability distribution which is important because it's often used in describing the behavior of rare events not events that happen a lot. So think about, for example, the um, drive through window at a fast food restaurant after 2 a.m. <laughs> after the bar rush, everything pretty much slows down. So every once in a while, if you were working the overnight shift, someone's going to come in, but once in a while on a random basis. Same thing if you're working at the customer service desk at the hotel overnight. People will come in but once in a while on a random basis. Alright, let's go ahead and read through this. The Poisson distribution is a discrete probability distribution that applies to occurrences of some event over a specified interval. Typically time. Could be seconds, could be a week, month, year, decade, century, over some specified interval. It doesn't even have to be a time, but that's what typically X, well actually that's not what X is, but X, but X is going to be the number of uh, occurrences that happen over that interval of time. Instead of time though, you could have some, you know, length some interval on the uh, on some distance mile inch etc or area typically it's time though like I said the random variable X is going to be the number of occurrences that happen sometimes called uh, uh, successes X would be the number of successes but in the context of the person the the more usual uh, interpretation of the random variable is it's the number of occurrences that happen over some interval. Now here is the formula for the Poisson distribution that says the probability of X occurrences over some interval of time is going to be the mean raised to X number of power times E to the negative U, mu, where again mu is the mean. If this number mu is the same as this number mu for the exponent. And then divide it by x factorial. And if you remember back from your algebra days, the e to the negative u, you know, this is an exponential function with the base of e, where e is uh, this natural number 2.71828 dot dot dot. An irrational number. Key is on your calculator. And remember, mu is the mean number of occurrences. You might have to calculate that. Let's go ahead and read through the uh, list of requirements here for using the Poisson distribution. Number one, the random variable x has to be the number of occurrences that occur over some interval, whether that interval is time distance, area, etc. The occurrences must happen on a random basis, not on a formulaic basis. The occurrences must be independent of each other. The occurrences must be uniformly distributed, meaning we can't have them clumped up at one point in the interval, but not other places. The mean of the Poisson distribution is mu. Standard deviation is sigma. And that's equal to square root of mu.
okay? That's just one of the uh, interesting things about this distribution. It's the only distribution where the variance is equal to the mean. Now, sometimes people get the Poisson distribution mixed up with the binomial distribution because of the fact that both of them are discrete distributions. But there are some important differences. Uh, namely, is that the binomial distribution is affected by the sample size and the probability of an individual success, P. Whereas the Poisson distribution is only affected by the mean mu. That's what gives it kind of an advantage. Also in the binomial distribution, the possible values are fixed between 0 and n. Remember, x is the number of successes out of n number of trials. So the, the greatest number uh, that x could be is n, in which case you would have every trial ending up with a success. It's like a, you know, a n number of coin flips ending up with n number of heads. But for the Poisson distribution, you could conceivably have an infinite number of occurrences happen over an interval. Okay? Now let's go through a nice easy example here. Suppose that we look over the last 100 years of record keeping and find that there were 530 Atlantic hurricanes. So 530 Atlantic hurricanes over 100 years, we're going to solve this Poisson distribution problem. Now, the mean number of hurricanes per year is just simply going to be the number of hurricanes divided by the number of years, which is 5.3. We're going to take 5.3 to be mu, the mean number of hurricanes then. And then if we want to calculate the probability that for any given year that there were two hurricanes, all we need to do is go into the formula for the Poisson distribution, plug in 5.3 from mu, and plug in 2 for x, right there and there. And for e, uh, we could substitute 2.71828 as an approximation, and we could plug this into our calculator. And we have 0 0.0701 approximately. Let me show you on the calculator how to do this calculation. All right, so we had, and I'm going to use parentheses here, so parentheses, and then 5.3 raised to the second power, or just squared, and then times, and then we're going to hit E to the negative 5.3. Okay, and then right arrow to get out of that exponent, and then close parentheses, divided by 2 factorial. 2, excuse me. Let's try it again. Sorry about that. Um, 5.3 squared times e to the negative 5.3 and then get out of the exponent, close parentheses, divide that by, and then we're going to hit 2 uh, factorial. Now 2 factorial, by the way, is 2, but we can just play along and put a factorial symbol after the end of it and then hit enter and there we go there is our Poisson probability now wouldn't it be nice if there was a preloaded formula in the calculator all you need to do is tell what the mean and number of occurrences is and as you can see from this command up here that there actually exists such a command so 
I'm going to show you how to access that command up here. Go hit second button right here, second, and then hit this button. See where it says distribution under the variables button. All right, now we are in the distribution menu. We're going to scroll down nice and leisurely to the Poisson PDF, probability distribution function. And the first number that you're going to input is the mean. Remember the mean for this case was 5.3 comma. And then the number of occurrences is the second number, 2. And then we're going to close parentheses, enter. And that should give us exactly the same number. So we don't have to memorize the formula necessarily. We can use our graphing calculator if you've got a TI-84 calculator. Other versions of the TI uh, family also have the Poisson, yeah, as long as it's a TI-80 or TI-90 something, or an Inspire. But if you have a TI-30, uh, you won't have this uh, preloaded formula for the distribution, so you'll just have to use this sort of calculation that you see here in order to carry out your Poisson probability calculation. Okay? We could use the Poisson distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. Because after all, the Poisson distribution is actually easier to calculate than the binomial distribution. Now we're going to use the Poisson distribution to approximate the binomial distribution when the sample size is large and P, the probability of an individual success from the binomial distribution, when P is small. So when N is large, P is small. So here's the mathematical requirement. We need the sample size to be at least 100, but the sample size times the probability of a success to be less than or equal to 10. In other words, the mean for the distribution for the binomial, which is NP anyway, needs to be less than or equal to 10. So once both of these requirements are satisfied, then when we can use the Poisson distribution to approximate the binomial. And if both of those requirements are met, then we can use NP as our calculation for the mean mu for the Poisson distribution. So let's take a look at an example here. Suppose that we've got this lottery game up in the state of Maine. It's called the pick four game, and you play 50 cents. And what you do is you select four digits. Remember, there's 10 digits to choose from, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you have 10 choices for the first digit, 10 choices for the second, 10 for the third, 10 for the fourth. So there's 10,000 possible four-digit numbers that you can select. Now you're going to go in and play this game 365 days of the year. You're going to go into that uh, grocery store and lay down 50 cents and buy one ticket. And you're going to do this 365 days in a row. I guess every day there's a different number that's drawn. Now, for any one time that you play, there's a 1 in 10,000 chance of winning. And so for this game, the, uh, you know, average number of times that you would expect to win, if you were to play 365 days, once per day, is actually this number, the N times P, 365 times 1 in 10,000. That's 0 0.0365. So you actually don't have much hope for winning <laughs> even once. There's like a 3.65% chance of winning once in one year if you were to play, you know, once every day of the year. 
Now, if we want to calculate the probability of winning at least once, it, that would require a binomial calculation. Or we could use the Poisson. Now, the sample size is certainly greater than 100 because in this case it's 365. And n times p was, oops, was certainly less than 10. In this case it's 0 0.0365. So we could use the Poisson distribution. Now, if we want to calculate the probability of winning at least once, that's going to be a 1 minus the probability of winning zero times. Now, using the Poisson probability distribution, the probability of winning zero times is going to be equal to the mean, which is 0 0.0365, raised to the zero power times e raised to the negative 0 0.0365 divided by zero factorial. Zero factorial is one, by the way. Now I want you to put this calculation, this expression here, into your calculator, except you can use E for the 2.71828 if you want to. And I want you to verify that you get 0.9642. As in, if you were to play once per day, 365 days in a row, that the probability of winning zero times is 0.9642. So that means one minus that event of winning zero times, um, meaning the probability of winning at least once is going to be one minus that, as in one minus 0.9642, which is 0 0.0358. So the probability of winning at least once is about a 3.58% chance. And that's how you can use the Poisson distribution to do that calculation. All right, so you're going to have some homework on the Poisson distribution. So that's it for today. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to try to record a, a video uh, for section 6.1 and 6.2 and maybe even 6.3 over the weekend. Uh, I'm going to be uh, out of town. I'm a, an Army Reservist, and I'm going to be doing some military training Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But I'll still be uh, in touch with you as you take your exams and do your homework. Uh, I have posted a, a Chapter 5 quiz for you to do after you do the chapter 5 homework as well so the train keeps on rolling down the track so to speak so make sure you get in to take your exam and keep up with the homework okay and next time we'll be starting chapter 6 have a good time have a good day and I'll talk with you next time